of invention. So, you know, you, you just, okay. you know, if something breaks, <laughs> if something breaks, you know, you got to, you got to fix it. And, you know, you just try not to be distracted. Um, techs, that's, that's an issue in Chicago. You have to beg people to help you. There's not a lot of good techs in Chicago. I'm, I'm going to get pummeled if any of these guys ever hear that, but uh, there's just not. You know, I, I Nashville is another story. There's there's tons of great technicians in Nashville. In fact, I have to hire people out of Nashville to uh, you know come in and, and help me. So so it 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 is rough, but but you you keep it going. You know, it, it's all necessity. You got to keep your sound up. You got to keep the maintenance up. Um, you know, don't hire knuckleheads that break stuff. That's another big thing, you know, watch, watch who you, who you deal with, you know, another, so it sounds like you've just made a lot of like smart and thoughtful decisions about how to do, how to just approach everything. And that's kind of like kept you. Afloat. Yeah. Well, here, here's a, here's a good one. And I, I wanted to, to mention this too. This, this was a, a dear friend who has passed away and he, he was a real innovator, um, a guy named Norman Druce. And he has a company called, Ato- he had a company called Atomic and they, one of the biggest things with our SSL councils was the power supplies. Oh my God! If the if if um, our power company browned browned us out, you know, if there was a brownout or a spike, you could be sure the next day our power supplies would crap out. They would go dead. They would blow something. So you know, you walk in the building, and you'd smell that smell of you know burning rubber, burning plastic, and you go, oh shit! You know, something's you know power supply blew. This happened so many times. One of the technicians here in Chicago was begging me to get rid of the boards, you know. And uh, it, it, it so Norman, in his genius, and I love this guy. He he built a a pretty revolutionary power supply for SSL four thousand series, and he is just a, he was a savior because I bought his power supplies. They weren't cheap, but they were five Gs. I bought two of them, and they you. Plug them up, you know. Put them in, turn them on, boom. I've I've had them on for years and years and years and years. Not one problem. So, but unfortunately, again, you know, rest in peace, Norman. He he passed away, and uh, his wife is and some of the the people he worked with are still got the company going. But uh, if anybody out there is with an SSL and you know on a power supply, because you're sick of fixing your SSL power supply, look up Atomic. I swear by them; they're fabulous. Cool. Uh, I'll definitely apl- I'll put a plug for in the show notes and uh, please do, buddy. Yeah. yeah, he he was a beautiful, beautiful man. So, but uh, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, keep keeping up with repairs. Uh, always buying new microphones, and, and also we have been uh, real hot on the plug-in trail too. I mean, we've been we've been keeping up with uh, being as current as possible. Uh, my guy Noam uh, Wallenberg and and Andy Shoemaker, another uh, fabulous engineer out of here. These guys are always like, you know, texting me, hey, man, this plug in, you know, check it out. Let's get it. Um, so, yeah, we've been just slowly building up our plug in selection, which helps us a lot out a lot, which I'd like to seg into, you know, mixing and, and talk to you uh, about mixing style and stuff like that. Sure. That might be interesting for people. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I guess before we get into mixing, let's talk about how you, you know, how you approach clients. Like, what, what does your workflow look like? Like, how do you get started with productions with clients? Do you do pre-production? Yeah. Yeah. We, we do as much pre-production as possible. I, I used to, you know, go to the band's rehearsal spaces and just, you know, my, my, my charge was they needed to buy me a six pack of beer. And, uh, you know, I'd sit in the rehearsal space with, uh, you know, earplugs and drink beer and, you know, critique their songs and, <laughs> And uh, those those were mainly for the you know live bands and and that was real successful. We did a lot of a lot of uh, uh, work ahead of time and uh, like some of the other guys are doing pre pro where it's you know synthetic you know it's live and synth so they're doing a lot of pre pro either in the studio or at home with their clients. Um, but yeah, it 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 works out good. But I always want to prepare people. That's the thing that I. I think one of our successes is that we're very, very open to our clients. We're not snobby. I think you could tell by the demeanor of who the, who the hell I am. Um, we're very down to earth as far as how we approach music. This is this is you know our client's dream, and we take that stuff real seriously. And I have people working here that are under my. Uh, same state of mind as far as don't ever betray a client's trust as far as, you know, thinking you're too cool. Even if it's, you know, the band's a little, 
you know, not up to par, man. Make them feel good, you know? I mean, do do them justice. Raise them up a couple levels, you know? Because who yeah. knows, th- two, three years from now, these guys may get a ton better and maybe their songwriting improves and maybe they're they're going to write the song that everybody loves and, uh, you know, never, ever uh, downplay anybody. And uh, there was yeah. a, there was an artist that came through uh, years ago named Rachel Yamagata. And she was with a band um, uh, that was, you know, she was the background singer and the girlfriend of the band leader. And she she was really a, a good person, very creative, very cool person. And and the band broke up and, I, and she said, I, she didn't know what to do. And I said, well, you know, you're you're a beautiful woman. Take advantage of that, whether, you know, get do, you know, get some headshots, you know, do some acting, do some modeling, you know, be your own performer, do your own thing. And I think it inspired her, and she did great. Uh, you know, that's another artist. Look her up, Rachel Yamagata. And I've she heard was, her name. Yeah, she was maybe the early aughts, and she was – like, I went to go see one of her shows, and I just uh, – my floor was just boing. you got to be kidding. She just was so fabulous. A really wonderful artist that I think everybody kind of said, you know, downplayed her in the band that she was with, you know, just the the girlfriend of the band leader, backup singer. And man, she was a powerhouse, man, really creative person. So, so you know, and, and that's the way I think we approach our clients is just, you know, help them, help them, you know, make sure that you're being down to earth and being honest and, and, and help them achieve their dream, you know? And, and that's, yeah. re- that's been a formula that's worked that it's not, I, I just, I feel good about being a musician my, my whole life and uh, I feel real blessed, you know, and I feel like. The musician, you know, being a musician, I'm part of a big, big brotherhood, sisterhood of yeah. uh, creative people who have chosen this ridiculously hard life, you know, to uh, <laughs> try to make try to make a living out of. Right? You know, right. It's, yeah. it ain't it ain't <laughs> easy, right? You you know, right? Not the not the smart decision, but no, I but, know, but I it's, know. It's, it's a it's a soul decision, you know. It's a you kind soul of... decision, exactly right. So yeah, man. So so I think you know that's 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 been one of our huge successes is we oh, we get tons of repeat people. There's a lot of competition out there. So, and there's good people yeah. too. There's really good studios. So, you know, we, we keep our head down, keep reinventing ourselves, buy good shit, have great people here, um, treat people with respect always. And uh, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's it's a sacred trust to these people. They're paying us money, man, you know, and, and yeah. we it's all know. It's business time. Yeah, it's business time. And musicians yeah. don't have, money doesn't grow on musician trees, that's for sure. So, yeah. So tell me about like, you know, as a guitar player, as a musician, like how much do you like get involved on the productions you work on, like as a musician as well, or or like versus like as the engineer and the producer? Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I I will I'll play on people's tracks, um, um, for sure. If anybody needs anything, um, I'm always there. I play a lot of slide guitar, which you know people always you know they'll hire me for slide playing. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and and this is a funny story though, is that I became known around. Chicago as an alter ego named Tambro because I'm a really good tambourine player. So, so that's, that's, <laughs> that, that's my boast, man. Right. Nice. I can play the shit out of a tambourine. And, and it's just so funny because, uh, I, I tell this story because, you know, bands would come in and they say, Oh, it's time for percussion now. And the drummer nine times, 99 out of a hundred times could not play the tambourine. And I'm, I'm trying to record <laughs> this guy, and he's it's all off. And I just say, "Hey, get in the boot, you know, come out in the control room, hit this button." I go in the control room, and I just, you know, play the tambourine and say, "All right, done." And, and so, so it's I, so funny you said that because that's happened to me so many times as like the producer. It's like, yeah. let me just do the ta- let me just do the tambourine or the yeah. shaker or yeah, whatever. Exactly, you know? like, I could do I could so, do this. So you can relate, man. So see, you need yeah, an all you need an alter ego now, right? Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. So I was known as Tambro, right? We we got to hire Tambro, Tam- <laughs> Tambro right? <laughs> okay, I'll get those tambourines uh, nice and sparkly. <laughs> Tell me about your your approach to guitar tones, because I was listening to a bunch of the records that you sent me before this this interview, and um, yeah, I love the guitar tones. Super, like I loved your up your upfront like fuzzy sounds and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Like, what's your approach? How you do know, you know? You know, honestly, man, it's just it's a matter of uh, I, I I've been a big fan of double miking. Sometimes I'll go, you know, and then positions. We'll go different positions with our microphones, just depending on what we're looking for. If we want a bitier tone, we'll just go dead on and super close. And 
I like ribbons quite a bit. You know, the old, you know, Steve Albini in Chicago is a big ribbon guy here. Nice guy. He's, they've, they've, whenever our ribbons break here, they're always loaning us ribbons. So they're, they're good people. That's awesome. Yeah, really good folks. Um, and, and, and we have a lot of amps. You know, that's one of the big things, honestly, is, is I would recommend, uh, I don't know how easy it is these days, but, you know, go look up, go to, used music stores buy some little shitbox amp crank it up see what it sounds like i mean we have a diversity of little tiny amps that that really help um uh, pedals is another thing that really helps and, and just uh, then filtering the sound you know filtering uh amp sounds is another uh, approach to it so, some of the guitar tones and things that i've sent you have we've filtered them you know i filtered the sound to just to create a different uh part of the song with a different filtered guitar uh, approach and that, that helps too but uh just guitars are actually very hard sometimes they're very hard to 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 work with because it's just a wealth of things that you can do i mean yeah. you, you could almost go catatonic thinking of all the things that you could do with a guitar my god what sound am i yeah. gonna use how am i gonna do this oh it's my god true. it's overwhelming the pickups man. the pickups the effects yeah, the yeah, amps yeah. it's like I mean, every there's so many variables right i mean i have a i have a, a baritone guitar that i adore you know i i've got a nice uh okay another plug uh, a guy named a guitar maker in in chicago named jeff benj has a fabulous uh, uh baritone guitar plays like a dream but just the whole idea of having a berry is great you know having a good electric 12 string is great you know, with acoustics, um, I've got real nice acoustic guitars. I've got a uh, Gibson Songbird, which is our main recording guitar. And then I've got a Martin D28, a 71 D28, which I tuned to Nashville tuning. And and so then I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll do acoustic on one side, do the Nashville tuning on the other side. And uh, you, just for anybody that's not familiar with Nashville tuning, it's uh, the E... And the B are normal, and then the G, D, A, E are up an octave. So you have to use different strings. So so the low four strings are up an octave, and mm. uh, it's a it's a beautiful sound. It sounds like it sounds like a twelve string, but it's different. You know, it, it does have a a nice sparkle to it without the 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 real jangly twelve string. It's kind of cool, right? Someone actually, a friend of mine who I work with a, a bunch. Uh, sometimes I'm mixing and whatever. Uh, was telling me that he he's been trying out the Nashville tuning, like mm-hmm. in, in you know in parallel with like regular tuning, just to get like the twelve string, but like in tune because yeah, it's impossible yeah, to, to yeah. tune a twelve string. There you go, right? Yeah, and and a little over jangly sometimes. You know, uh, yeah. if I had. Or you know the Tom Petty twelve string is fabulous, and I there's a guitar maker. Um, Again, another plug, but uh, uh, there's a bass company in Chicago called Lakeland. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm a bass player, so oh. I know bass. Okay, yeah. good. Well, great. Johnny yeah. Piricello is one of the owners, and he is uh, my co-guitar player in the Nicholas Tremulous Band. And he uh, he and his brothers are, are the owners oh, wow. of, of Lakeland Bass. So if you want a bass. That's amazing. I'll talk to Johnny. Right now, Johnny's a fabulous yeah. guitar player too. But he makes good. If, they I, make, if I if I have the dough and I want to replace my P, then I'll give him a call. There, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, in addition, they're great recording bases. I'm telling you, they're really good. Yeah, uh, I use those a lot. I've got an old '71 P, uh, no, an old '71 jazz bass that uh, my guy Jeff Benj worked on, and, and it's fantastic. We have uh, flat wounds on it. And, you know, sometimes we'll do mm. a mute, you know, put the mute under the bridge and or put some sure. foam under the bridge. And it's, it's just got a beautiful um, uh, old sound to it. But, but yeah, as far as guitar sounds go, amps, different amps, uh, uh, crazy pedals. Like we have something called a Mastaton, Mastatron. I don't know who makes it, but that's just a nutbag pedal. It's just a real out of control, distorted sound. Gnome is a big fan of that. Um, uh, filtering the sounds and uh, yeah, that's 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 uh, you just gotta you really think, work at them. Yeah, do you think the board has like a, anything to do with that that tone or 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 it's like less than no, the other stuff? No, I mean you know you know. All right, well here's the thing that I didn't mention too is that one of the things that we do is we're not we used to go through the mic pre's of the SSLs and honestly they are always a source of problems. Um, uh, so we we do a lot of outboard mic pre's. I mean, I've got 12 old Neve mic pre's. 
like uh, 1073s, 1066s, the originals. So these Mm -hmm. were like Brent Brent Averill, 